Alright. So what's going on? What are we up to today? I'm um, just shooting a wedding. Got my typical Sony stuff. And um, I've got the GFX 50S2 with the 80mm 1.7. And uh, I have all my normal kit as well, and I also have the XT5 with the 18mm 1.4. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a plan, but I'm going to just try them out and uh, yeah, see how they work. We're, we're doing getting ready here at this um, golf resort. So, yeah, I'm going to see the girls. It should be a fun day. They're pretty cool. So, the other day, my buddy Ethan came around to have a bit of a chat and some hangs. And we were discussing the possibility of maybe buying a Fujifilm kit for our weddings. For me, it's really just for photography. I'm not really considering at all using Fujifilm for video. Although testing out the F-Log2 has been pretty impressive so far. In today's video, I'm just going to generally share my experiences with the Fuji X-T5. And I also use the GFX 50S2. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys a bunch of photos from each of those cameras and some from my Sony so you can kind of compare them. Honestly, I don't have an issue with my Sony's. They're fantastic. They're a great workhorse and they have never really let me down to be honest. But I am feeling a little bit bored and you know, Fujifilm isn't new to me. I do own an X100V if you've seen my videos on that camera. I do really, really love it. And in fact, I shoot pretty much all of my personal work with that camera. If I go to a birthday, or I'm taking photos of my kids, or I'm just going on a little trip somewhere, I'll always take my X100V, even if I take my Sony's. But yeah, it's really my personal everyday camera and I just love it. So with the release of the Fuji X-T5, I thought maybe it was time to try them again. Before we start this video, I'll just drop a couple of facts on you guys so you know where I'm coming from. The Fujis were all sent to me from Fujifilm through Auckland Camera Center, so I really appreciate those guys hooking it up for me. I didn't even talk to Fuji, they just organized it. Fuji said sure, and they gave me a whole bunch of stuff to use and try out. There was no, uh, you know, you can't see this, you can't see that, they're not paying me and all the thoughts in this video are my own. On top of that, I am gonna put some raw files in the description so you can download images from my A7IV's, the X-T5 and the GFX camera so you can have a play with those for yourself. And all the images that you're gonna see chucked up on the screen are edited with my preset pack, the new V3, and most of them were edited with the main preset in that pack. If you wanna check those out, there's a link in the description. It really supports the channel and keeps me doing this ad-free content for you guys. With that being said, let's jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just So before we get on to the X-T5, I want to touch on the Fuji GFX 50S2. I'm not going to say that anymore, we'll just call it a GFX from now on, but that's the camera I was using. I have experience with medium format film, I've had a Pentax 6x7, I've had some Mamiya 645s, and I really have always enjoyed that format. And I know the GFX sensor is a little bit smaller than true 645 format, but I wanted to try it out anyway and just see what it would be like at a wedding for shooting you know, portraits and, and things like like that it was immediately clear to me that it's so slow <laughs> you know even when we got to the girls getting ready uh, it just really struggled to autofocus um, it does do it you know if you're doing portraits where people are just standing still and there's no movement or anything uh, it's fine uh, it is slow but it's fine saying that it does have a unique look that I don't know if it's going to come across on these YouTube videos very well you really have to see them on a full-size monitor to kind of appreciate the difference in depth of field it's not necessarily shallower than like a 50 mil 1.2 but you know it's just the way it falls off and the dynamic range and the colors are a little bit different than a full frame camera so it was interesting with these weddings shooting a crop sensor camera a full frame camera and a medium format camera all at once so the GFX, like I said, it really has its place. I think it's a fantastic camera and it's really fun to use. Um, it just creates some really nice images that are really sharp with just an interesting look to them. And if I was going to use the GFX 50 at weddings, it would be mostly for portrait orientation photos uh, when we're doing like sunset and, you know, maybe a couple of shots through the ceremony. 
but it doesn't have the autofocus to rely on for, you know, like a bride walking down the aisle or anything like that. In my mind, it's really for those kind of still life portraits that you're going to do at golden hour or something like that. So that's the GFX system for you. I'm not going to talk too much about that because like I said, I think it's a specialty camera and I wouldn't be buying a Fuji kit just so I could use the GFX. I think that would be a really amazing like third body that I would use alongside the next camera that we're going to talk about. So for the rest of the wedding days, uh, I didn't use the Fuji X-T5 for everything, but I did use it for quite a few shots alongside one of my Sony a7 IVs. So I'm gonna chuck these photos up on the screen and you guys can just check them out. I'm not really going into depth with like differences in quality, although we are gonna talk about detail in a minute. So for me, using the X-T5s is more of a fun experience. Um, I just really enjoy the process of using these cameras. They're just really fun to use and I think that's important when you're taking photos in a creative way. Um, having a piece of equipment that inspires you to take photos, I think personally can really change how you go about doing that and it can just give you I don't know I don't know what it is, maybe it's just a different version of what you're seeing, but the handling of it without the grip is not great for me at all. Um, I've said it many times, I do have big hands and it just, you know, my hands don't fit this camera. Um, but I did take it to a local camera shop here and put the Fuji grip on it, the genuine one, and that felt way better. I would have to use that grip with these cameras. Um, but other than that, um, just the size of them and just how they, even just how they look and the dials and everything, I do really enjoy using these cameras and yeah. One thing that stood out to me straight away is that the viewfinder on this Fuji X-T5, um, although some people have complained that it's not really an upgrade over a previous model, it's definitely better than my Sony a7 IV viewfinder and yeah, it's a really great, really sharp, good sized viewfinder that I really enjoyed using. And same with the rear LCD monitor. I just love that for photo use. Like it's not gonna be ideal for video people, but um, as a photographer, if you're doing only stills, this is the screen I prefer. And yeah, it's a really nice sharp screen as well. Now in terms of image quality, when I was looking through at the back of the screen, taking photos, they looked fantastic. I really love the profile that I have on there. So I copied the same custom Fuji profile that I have on my X100V onto this camera. And honestly, the JPEGs are so close that I could probably, as long as the white balance was correct, just deliver the JPEGs. And I don't think my customers would complain at all. Um, in fact, I'm gonna try that probably. I'm gonna send a set to one of the couples that I'm really close with and you know just let them tell me what they prefer whether they prefer my editing style or whether they prefer the jpeg straight out of the camera so that'll be really interesting and i'll update you guys on what they tell me however when i got the files into lightroom i found that the difference in detail from my sony a7 IVs and the xt5s was just so far from opposite 
that I couldn't believe it. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about the way you have to sharpen Fujifilm files in Lightroom. And, uh, you know, they definitely behave differently, but I've gone through all the recommendations that all you guys that shoot Fuji have told me, and I think I've got the sharpening to a pretty nice level that the detail is just really good, but it's still, it's just nowhere near what the Sony a7 IV was giving me with the 35mm or any of the other lenses. It's just insane, I just can't believe it. And I don't know if it's an APS-C thing. I know it's not a lens thing because the Fuji lenses are all fantastic. And you know, I've had APS-C cameras before that have a crazy amount of detail. So I'm not sure what's up with that either. But after looking at the photos for a while and kind of comparing them and zooming into 100% and just kind of analyzing everything, I kind of came to the conclusion that I need somewhere in between the Sony full frame system and the Fuji system. Um, the Sony files are just so sharp that, you know, I find myself adding quite a bit of grain um, using ProMist filters to kind of dull them down a little bit and they still have an amazing amount of detail. But for stuff like weddings, you don't always want the sharpest, you know, pin sharp photo because it's just going to bring up any imperfections and skin and things like that. And I find the Fuji files are, are really pleasing to look at. And I just really enjoy using them. I just wish they were a little bit sharper. So if you guys know any other techniques to getting them looking a little bit better, um, drop a comment below. I'd appreciate any kind of assistance that you guys can give me with that. I am thinking it's a processing thing though because looking at the JPEGs, the full size fine JPEGs, whatever come out of the Fuji X-T5, um, they are sharper than the raw files. So it must be a processing thing. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, oh, you have to use Capture One. I'm not going to use Capture One. I'm never going to use Capture One. Well, I mean, maybe I wouldn't say it never, but you know, I've tried it multiple times up until the most recent version a few months ago, and really put a lot of effort into trying it. But it just doesn't suit my workflow. You know, for someone shooting 50 weddings a year, it just is too much of a hassle, and it just doesn't work that well for me. Um, it's just personal preference. If you guys like using Capture One you go for gold, you're gonna love it. But for me, I really prefer Lightroom and I have to stick to that. My conclusion with the Fuji X-T5 files is that they are really beautiful. They, you know, the colors are really great. You definitely don't wanna be shooting Fuji and Sony side by side with, you know, for the kind of work that I'm doing. It's just too much of a hassle to get them looking similar. So for me, if I'm doing photo at weddings, it would really be an X-T5 kit or a Sony kit. It's not gonna be a hybrid of both because it just doesn't work for me. The next really important thing and probably the most important thing that I was concerned with or just really wanted to find out how it would behave is using the Fuji X-T5 at weddings for like with autofocus. The Sony cameras are like cheating now. The Sony a7 IV focus system is so good that you know I can't imagine any improvements helping because you know I'm getting pretty much a hundred percent hit rate with my Sony a7 IVs. So I wanted to try the X-T5 and see how it would behave with autofocus, eye tracking, um, you know, tracking a bride walking towards me down the aisle, um, focus and low light. And honestly, I was pretty impressed. It's definitely better than any other Fuji camera I've tried in the past. I did have to turn the eye autofocus off because it just picks up a whole bunch of stuff. It does work well on the eye, but when I was trying it in my lounge, it was picking up my Xbox as a face. Um, it picked up a school bag as a face. So it was just kind of jumping all over the place. So I just had to decide to turn eye focus off and just use single point focus. And that does work really well. So with the Sony's, I often just have my focus point in the middle and then you just kind of grab your subject and the real time tracking keeps it there. You can recompose as long as you're holding down the focus button, uh, it just, is in focus always um, and they work really fantastic in low light so for me it was just kind of going to the fuji system and switching back to the center point focus and moving it around with the joystick to get my composition right on one hand the slowing down was kind of nice i really appreciated that and you know i just was probably more thoughtful about composition because I had to put my focus point where I wanted it. But other than that, the actual performance of the tracking, the AFC autofocus, 
Uh, it worked really well. I didn't have many missed shots. It wasn't always perfect, but you know, it works well in low light. It works well in bright day sun. It is also important to remember that, you know, these cameras are still pretty new to me, even though I, I'm pretty experienced with Fuji's. I haven't used the X-T5 or the X-T4 in a professional setting. So my muscle memory and the way I use cameras is still programmed to use Sony. So I'm sure it would get better the more I use them. Uh, but yeah, the, the autofocus performance was great. Uh, it was impressive. It was better than other Fuji cameras that I've used in the past. Uh, just eye focus needs like a firmware update or something. And uh, you know, just to make it a little bit more usable, especially when there's multiple people in the shots and it's picking up stuff that isn't even a person. One other thing I was really impressed with is the battery life on the X-T5. It has a much bigger battery than the older cameras, obviously. And uh, I didn't even use one. To be fair, I only took like 600 photos with one wedding, but I didn't even use half of the battery. So the battery life on these cameras, on the X-T5 in particular, is really fantastic. So I just wanna give Fuji a, another shout out and say thanks for hooking it up with Auckland Camera Center and sending me this whole kit. I do also have the X-H2S upstairs and uh, I'm going to make some content around that. And yeah, other than that, I didn't really have any issues. I just need that grip on there and just to kind of practice with the autofocus system and sort out the file sharpening so I can get a little bit more detail out of the images. It did surprise me with that because it's higher megapixels than my a7 IV, but yeah, the detail was just probably half what I'm getting out of the Sony cameras. So like I said, let me know in the comments if you have any tips for those files. Even if you want to play with the ones in the download folder for yourself and send them to me on Instagram or something and I'll have a look at them. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm trying not to be biased. I just want something new. I'm not planning on completely ditching Sony or anything like that. Uh, I just, you know, a lot of my weddings are photo only and I would just like the option to have something a little bit fresh for me to use and something just to change it up and, and see how my wedding season goes with it, you know? So if you got to the end of this video, I really appreciate you guys. Drop a comment below and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'd really love to get that subscriber count up. You know, the views versus subscribers is very different. So if you guys want to see more of this content, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification icon. And I'll see you guys in the next video really soon.